Our time is started. I've got some serious, some serious mileage on my credit cards I can run on. <laughs> but I got to know for sure because I don't want to have to pay that $50,000 credit. You don't have to pay that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Don't sell your socks. <laughs> Good morning. 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 Just change the slide. I'll put this next one up here because it was so cool. Uh, that one. I love that. Mm -hmm. Especially the skeleton. Uh, okay, you can change the slide. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll move pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, so they're right. Uh, okay, the Mayan calendar. Now, um, this is where it all started and everybody got hung up on this. It predicts that the 13th back to will be on 12, 21, this winter solstice of next year. Okay? That's how they set it up. And if you'll just change. <laughs> and, yeah. Wikipedia talks about it a little bit, and I put a link up here if you're interested. Um, but Wikipedia has a very good article on the calendar. I don't let students use Wikipedia, but I use it all the time. That's out there. Uh, and they did a really good calendar. Oh, yeah. And this just is a lot of data on how you calculate these different long counts that the Mayan Jews and here. September 21st, 2012 is just the day that the calendar goes to the next age. Back to changes. Um, it, this is some more of the detail. It's 13.0.0.0. And the only thing that's going to happen is we're going to enter the 14th pick tune or age. Uh, or the next back tune of that age. So if you change it, which is this kind of, is probably the best. Yeah. Covers it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Um, the age of Aquarius I thought I'd bring in here because in the 70s, that was really big. They didn't predict any catastrophes, and really, neither did the Mayans. It's just a change. And yes, the world will change uh, on December 21st, 2012. It will also change tomorrow. So take your pick. Next. Um, there's a lot of scenarios I found out there. Some of them I heard. So I wrote this up uh, a year ago about this. Uh, the Milky Way Galaxy Disaster Scenario. There are two of those. It's First of all, it said that the will be in line with the Milky Way Galaxy Center, um, and it will cause a pole shift and massive destruction. So if you change that to the next, um, this shows roughly on the orbit where the sun is. That shows our orbit, and that shows the galactic center. Of course, this is all graphic, so it's not accurate, but that's close enough. Um, we're 30,000 light years from the center. It takes about 210,000 years to make that circle. Um, that really isn't very long astronomically. It sounds like a lot. But if you figure, if we're on the line with it 100,000 years ago, there should have been some terrible catastrophe. Right? When we're on the other side of the world. Yeah. Sorry. So that isn't going to work. Next one. Um, this just shows the orbit. We never come close to the center of the galaxy. Next one. Um, this actually is very well publicized on the internet. This is how some people actually think that the sun's orbit goes around the galaxy. And it will be going right through. Uh, it's a hoax. It's Scientific garbage, but this is a very common picture in every every website I've seen just about. Next, um, okay, next is really cool. The jet of high energy particles coming out of the black hole in the center of the galaxy is going to fry us or make the pole shift. Depends on who you're talking to. Um, it's 
says that we will be in line with this. Well, if you go back one, mm -hmm. uh, back one, two, one more. See, the pole would be coming straight out here. We never even get near it. Okay, I had three. Mm -hmm. So let's get the dust. There, that's good. The Milky Way Center contains a three billion, a million mass of the sun black hole, which is really cool. It does have a jet of energy coming out of it. That's even cooler. And the, the central part is really dense with dust and fog and gas and stuff. And we're very well shel sheltered from that black hole, which is a very good thing because you wouldn't want to live near that radiation environment. But we're not going to get it. The next one um, says the Earth will be in line. This is a quote, obviously. Um, but it is wrong. We'll never even be, the closest we'll ever come above the plane of the galaxy won't be for another 200 years. And if you think the plane of the galaxy is flat like this, and beams come out here, and we're way over here, and we move on that scale maybe this much up and down. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, I love that. Pretty cool. That, that's kind of like, that's a jet coming out of a single black hole, but it probably looks a little like that in the center of the galaxy. Um, next one. Okay, Nibiru, 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 a hard one for me to say. All right, Nibiru or Eris is supposed to come into the solar system and uh, mess up everything and comes every now and then. Eris, of course, I've got a picture of. Eris is real, but near Nibiru, oh, next. That up is apparently weird. Uh, a gentleman called Sitchin translated a bunch of um, cuneiforms from Babylonia. And they had come up with the idea that, uh, next one, that these people, that Anunnaki, came to Earth from Nibiru. And this is according to his translations. These are not universally accepted, except on the internet, where everybody thinks they're right. Um, it talks about the mirror's orbit being very elliptical, and then it goes out beyond the orbit of Pluto, and then comes as close to the as, as the asteroid belt, and will interact with the inner planets. Next one. Um, it took. 3,600 years to go around. Uh, that's kind of bad to begin with, but it's supposed to be coming back here next year, before 2013. They're not real sure, but they don't have a good date on it. But it's one of the things they're throwing into the 12, 21, 12 thing. So it's claimed that this could cause havoc, and it would. It really would if this were true. But next one, it is. You, we found the uh, um, Uranus was found by Selenium Herschel, and then perturbations on Uranus actually caused us to find Neptune. We didn't find it. It was found by mathematicians, not uh, observers, um, and they get the credit for it, which is nice. We've seen this, if it's coming. Nothing is going on out there. Next one. Um, Nemesis has also been mentioned, though not quite so much. This was uh, really big back in the 80s, and it's saying that the, um, some of the mass extinctions could be caused by common impacts on the Earth as Nemesis came closer, Nemesis being ground or a very small red star um, in companionship with the sun. And we've been looking for it ever since. It has never been found and no evidence of it has been found. 
But they're still looking. This is not something that it, you can't prove negative. Um, the what new wise telescope should be able to find it if it's out there. But if it does exist, it could not come near our inner solar system for the same reason the near, near Bureau could not. Hey, no perturbation, nothing's going on. Go on next. Now this is just a nice picture, kind of give an idea. That's the sun. You see how monstrous it is. And this is about the size of a ne of nemesis if it actually existed. Um, you can see why it's way out, way past Pluto. We might not be able to see it even if it blows on its own. So uh, it's still in the works, but it's not in the works for 2012. <laughs> Next. This is the next one then. This just shows the solar system and shows you how far out you have to go. Uh, can you do the next one? Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, can't really see it. The orbit comes down here, it's red, which is lousy for this. But up there is the uh, object. That's the closest it could ever come according to uh, the internet, not according to scientists. The scientists don't even know it's there. Um, in any case, it's way outside the orbit of Pluto. We don't worry about it at this point. Um, next, um, they're kind of just stories, stories that people told uh, 5,000 years ago and then are now being taken for fact. I sure hope the novels we're reading today will not be taken for fact 5,000 years from now. Um, it's pretty much what I I can tell it is. Some of them, though, are just flat, scientifically impossible. Not improbable, just can't happen. Laws of physics for them. Go ahead. Um, this is the graphic from the internet about near Beer. And the next one, Eris, uh, I thought I'd mention this, that Eris is real. It's a uh, small dwarf planet like Pluto, very much like Pluto, but it's way out there. You can see some pictures of it. That's the best picture we can get out of it, pretty much. Next. And the idea of a pole shift is unfounded. Now, the pole shift itself happening, you saw this in the movie 2012. I love this action movie, so of course I thought that it has to be real. Um, what happens is that the pole would flip upside down. It has never happened. It can't. Next slide. Um, the science behind it is that the moon acts as a balancer. And it isn't, for Mars, it isn't forbidden that the pole would flip. But for the Earth, we have two bodies here, and the Mars and the Moon keeps our own axis going in the right direction and stayed in the right direction for as long as we can measure the paleontological record, which is pretty long. Um, conserves the angular momentum, and over recorded history, nothing has ever happened when we've been in this particular position. Um, we do rotate. Next one. I think um, this one, the precession. Now, over 26,000 years, the axes do precess. And right now we're pointing toward um, Polaris, the star Polaris. The uh, Pharaoh Chia, however you pronounce it, no one really knows, uh, built the Great Pyramid, and he has a window, tiny little window built into the pyramid that goes and points at the North Star. But it points at Subis, not Polaris. Because back then, we were back farther in that thing, in that path, and the North Star was Subis. So, nothing much happened. Next one. Um, magnetic pole shift. Uh, this is another thing that people have mixed up. And there is some evidence of this. We found reversal in the magnetic field in the rocks in the mid-Atlantic bridge, uh, but 
A magnetic pole shift happens every few hundred thousand years. Again, that can really overdo the one. And there is evidence that our magnetic field is weakening. Um, and, but it also shifts all the time anyway. You can see from 2001 to 1904, 1831, it's actually been going harder more. So, next. The, if anybody's interested, the reason for this is one of the reasons they think might be true is that the core of the Earth comes in two parts. One part is the liquid on the outside, and the inner part is solid like a nickel iron ball bearing. And it kind of floats in there, so it has some motion that isn't necessarily well coupled with the rest of the Earth. But um, the reversal, there's some weakening. If it happens, it should take about a thousand years. Uh, I read a study about uh, the last one, and they had mapped it, and it had marched through the Pacific from north to south pole, and the pole changed. Now, if the pole migrated to over New York City or Atlanta, that might be a problem, but you just wouldn't go outside in the summer, and or else you would get uh, radiation poisoning. Because radiation does come in at the poles. That's why we have northern and southern light. But other than that, and since the Earth is mostly 70% water, most likely going to be over water. Next one. Um, the records of past shifts, we have seen nothing that corresponds to any large disaster. Next. Okay, planetary alignment. This is the one my fun line. Uh, they say the planets will be aligned, and it should be 2012. I don't know why. There's something in me that keeps writing 2000. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the second place. It's wrong. If you turn to the next one, it really shows it well. Um, here, you'll see that Jupiter and Saturn are kind of on opposite sides of the sun, sort of, almost. But the planets are spread all over the place, every one of them. Try the next. Um, this has happened in 88, I really remember, it was a big to do. You were there then. California was going to fall into the ocean, everybody was panicking. And it was a lot more planets. They were all on one side of the sun then. There were none on the other side. Nothing happened. Uh, one of my friends, when I mentioned that, said, well, maybe intellectually. <laughs> uh, okay. Gravity of the planets is just too weak to really affect the Earth in any major way, as long as they stay in their orbits which, how would they get out without a major collision? So, next. Okay, Comet is on a collision course with Earth. That's the headline, end quote. Um, okay, Comet Elenin. Well, I looked up Elenin, and it turns out not only is it going to collide, but it actually broke up. The remnants are gone, won't be back for 12,000 years. But a comet impact is one of the disaster scenarios that is has some likelihood. Um, comets have caused horrible change. Next one, um, the most important, most recent was Tungusta in Siberia, where they saw it hit, actually didn't hit, it exploded above the surface, caused huge forest fires, and the red sky was seen from these forest fires in Moscow. Uh, they said that you could read a newspaper in London at night by the light from the sky from these forest fires. Um, now, we would have only a few months warning to this. <clears throat> in fact, um, all the time, large meteors, not the little ones, pretty big ones, come between us and the Earth. And we usually don't find out about them, uh, other than the moon, rather. We don't find out about them until it's past. Uh, 
the most likely thing that will happen is we will find out since comets are bigger and they glow on their own, well, they glow reflected light from the sun. Um, we see it at most four months ahead of time. So you can tell your stocks then. <laughs> okay. Okay, but we haven't found one that for next year, but we really don't know. Four months. Go to the next. Um, this is a picture, a photograph, five years after the Tonga stuff began. That the scientists, it took them five years to get there. As I said, no one was killed because no one was there. But it's very remote. But you can see it looks horrible five years later. Next. There's still scars, by the way. The recent, most recent photos show scars in that forest. Um, solar flare. This is another one that actually could happen. The sun is becoming active again. It's going to have a solar peak in 2013. Um, the last time this happened, 11 years ago, there weren't quite so many computers around. My car wasn't, doesn't really have a major computer in it, but my son's car, he has to have a computer thing that's not a car. I mean, it's computers everywhere. You can uh, be a real problem. So if you turn to the next, uh, these, this is just a quote about how it will, there, there will be a major flare in the next two years. That's just given. Whether it will hit Earth is something else again. It has to be pointed toward us, and it has to follow the orbital path and hit the Earth. But it usually happens at least once in every solar mass. Next one. Okay. Now, the sun emits flares. These cause usually coronal mass ejections, and it's those things that actually kill our computers. If they impact our magnetic field, well, you can kill the computer chip. Um, last time it actually impacted the uh, North American uh, electric grid, wiped out uh, the electricity in Ontario and a lot of places too. So it, it can be really nasty. Next one. This is something that can be predicted. That's a uh, banner from the Soho uh, Satellite the Observatory monitors it real time. If you want to look at the sun, turn on the sun. It's there right now. And we can be protected and we can actually take things down, um, unplug your computer and put some aluminum foil over it. At the, that will protect you from the very worst EMF. Like an atom bomb going off downtown would protect it. Um, we can harden our electrical grids and the sensitive systems. So uh, whether they'll do it or not, that's something else again. It's, it's not only possible, so it's cheaper. Um, Armageddon from non-scientific sources, oh boy. Okay, Revelation doesn't predict Armageddon on that particular day. It doesn't give anything. Um, Astrology doesn't predict any more disasters than it usually does, which is quite a few. But others are a little more specific. Bible codes, numerology, go on. Uh, go a little faster through these. Uh, Edward Casey has predicted something terrible with the pole shift. And this is one of the reasons they actually bring in pole shifts. But it didn't have anything to do with the planets or the war. So they just... Yeah. Well, Edward Casey did this. He's very, very famous. I don't know the name. Um, then this one, the Bible code, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible have been studied for Bible codes. Do not please ask me who these are. Because I'm good at math. And it doesn't make any sense. Uh, next. Um, there's a YouTube uh, video. It's interesting. It's about 30 minutes long. It covers it pretty well. I still don't understand. Um, but he says that it cannot be ruled out that it may be happening next year according to the Bible code. Next. Um, 
In the Quran, one of the uh, followers, Ali Adam, has taken numerology and changed it into crimeology. So that's what numerology is either. Uh, he uses prime numbers instead of sequential numbers to figure out what was really written in the Quran. Next. Um, and this, this it is the day on which they shall be exposed to hellfire. Taste the fruit of your denial. That is what you took lightly, looked upon as false promises. Um, that day. And that's what it's supposed to read in the Quran if you use this primology. Now, you have to really work at it. Government cover up. This is the big one. I've got my, my dear son is darling, but uh, he's a great conspiracy theorist. He says it's the government cover up. It doesn't matter what it is, by the way. Always. Huh? Everything the government cover up. Yeah. Well, there, we have enough, there are plenty of government cover-ups, but this one, you can cover up for a government, the government. Can you imagine the United States and China much agreeing on anything? I didn't, I, we're allies. I didn't say the United States and Iran. Okay, so, even so, it's unlikely, but next, you'd have to have every government do it. Um, it's impossible to cover up uh, basic scientific knowledge. Most astronomy is not done by astronomers. I'm an astronomer. I'm trained to be an astronomer. That's what my thesis was in. Um, and I'm, the number of professional astronomers in the world, most of them belong to the American Astronomical Society, and the list of them, of members, make the books much smaller than the Gainesville phone book. There just aren't very many of them. Almost all astronomy is done by amateurs. It's a rich man's book. Costly. But there's a lot of rich people who like to do it. And they communicate. They're the ones who got us the camera that is now in my phone. Uh, they're the ones who actually spur the development of the electronic camera for their telescope, not astronomers. We couldn't afford it. Uh, they're the ones who really get the cutting edge on all the elect good electronic devices, the good stuff. They communicate by the internet. They communicate by phone. There's nothing else, plain old letters. You can't keep this information secret. It just can't be done. Go on. Okay. Just in case. Okay. You can find some really great things. Anything for a really amateur person. Next. This one I really like. That's all actually offered on Amazon. It's your disaster survival kit. Free. Next one. So it comes in handy for other disasters too. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. Last thing I will I be embarrassed if I'm wrong? Well, some disasters going to happen in twenty twelve. Just think think of the earthquake of uh, Japan, the earthquake of Congo just last week, uh, in Turkey. Um, there's always a disaster. Always. So, you know, maybe it will happen, but if Armageddon comes, I do not expect to survive it. I don't even particularly want to survive it. Uh, I, am, I am a civilized person, and I would not do well in a shelter with minimal stuff. I need my computer, my TV, and you know, all the rest of that stuff. So I don't care. I won't be here to worry. The next, the last slide, the very last slide, is just, these are some sites. Guy and Telescope probably has one of the best articles on this, but the rest of these are kind of interest. These are all science sites. I didn't put in any of the non-science sites. They're part of the Okay, any questions? my internet people. That's it. Well, I do have a question. Yes. Um, you know, we have this nice, beautiful, humongous, red giant, super giant, just waiting to go supernova. 
In the constellation of Orion. Yes. Could Beetle that juice. happen? Oh, Beetlejuice was possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. but human astronomy means a whole lot different than stone in Atlanta. Uh, we're talking 10,000, 1,000, 10 years. Tomorrow, we don't know. Uh, it's going, though. Oh, definitely. It's, a thousand, it's over 1,000 light years away. Not much chance of it hurting us. It will be beautiful, and we might have a slight increase in radiation, but it's not, especially if it's not so that our magnetic or during a magnetic field reversal, our magnetic field will take care of it. If the depth of the field reversal at solar mass might cause a little problem. Might not. Hard. So along with what what is scary, I didn't put in here is colliding neutron stars. First of all, we can't see them. So most of them are out there. We cannot see them. They, if they're in a binary system, they automatically will spiral down eventually and collide. And that gives a gamma ray burst. That can strip off part of our upper atmosphere, which means we lose the ozone layer, radiation goes up, and we, well, we live at night. But most of the food will be gone is the hard part, so we'll be hungry. But that is a scenario that we cannot predict any more than you could predict the hand of God coming down and plucking you off the planet. You just can't predict something. We can't see it. There's no possible way to do it. Uh, but neutron stars are incredibly rare, and most of them are single, not double. So. Okay, all right, are there any more questions? There are none online. Uh, 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 yeah, one one of my students sent that in. You know, yeah. that, that, and I asked her where the problems is at the internet. Yeah. Uh, we can't figure out how to make that much destruction without a nuclear device now. How the heck could Tesla do it? <laughs> so don't sell your stock. Don't quit your job. Well, I, I, my, one of my biggest concerns for 2013 involves the solar flare. I'm not so much worried about my car as much as all of the satellites that we have in orbit. Yeah. That, um, if yeah. no, there's no protection, no putting the loop unless we no. it. So that's no. my biggest concern. It's got to be hit directly, happen. though. Mm -hmm. But don't we have enough satellites orbiting that even, uh, not even a direct hit would, I mean, could, could knock out a nice chunk? <laughs> uh, last time we had solar, and by the way, the solar mass is projected to be considerably smaller this time than it has been in the past. So, you know, most of the scenarios are gone. But last time, which was a big solar mass, um, a flare knocked out the Landsat satellite. And we didn't get another one for a long time. And weather uh, prediction was really hampered. Yeah, that was a big problem. We have a lot more satellites now, though. If nothing else, probably take serious and use that. Okay, the radio satellite. Um, on the other, but if it hits, they're dead. Yeah. They're dead. And if it hits while somebody's in space station, it's directly on the space station. There isn't much they can do except for aluminum foil. Get into the hardened area and line it with foil. But they have a hardened area, but still. Um, you know, going into space is very dangerous, not just radiation. Uh, they come back old men and women because the bones go. Um, bones become, they become premature osteoarthritis, and the bones become poor. And they have the bones of 70, 80 year old person. It's scary to go up there. We, we have to take the earth with us when we leave, or else we don't 
the roster. Yeah. Pick tune is the long one. Back tune is, I think it's pick tune is era and back tune is like long bunch of years. It went to 144,000 days. I think we can look back. Um, let's see. It would be real. It would be like the fourth slide in. We're going to go to 18 bags. I was wondering where they're going. Um, now, that's something I didn't think to look up. That's a good question. 144,000 days. Yeah. And, and we're going to list it in. What did you say? I mean, Next, pick tune. And back tune. That's the same time. Oh, okay. and, and there was a number, the one that they figured were going Yeah, to that 13.13. Oh, okay. Yeah. 13 pick tune. Okay. And then the 0 back tune of that pick tune. Sort of like, well, you know, the long years of pick tune. Yeah, they had phase 20, like that's a little number. Uh, phase 18, as far as I know. Yeah, I always thought that was a little number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, phase 12 is what the Babylonians have, and that makes a lot of sense, because it is an excellent number system. You know, more divisors, more simple multipliers, all of that. But phase 18, we have two real divisors, well, maybe three, three real divisors. Yeah. That's, I always figured when I heard that, I lost respect for the Mayans. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have much to go by, and there weren't that many high cultures before them. Yeah, before them, Mesoamerica, but they could predict astronomy better than almost any civilization at the time, their astronomical predictions were astoundingly accurate. So they knew how to use the base 18 system. Although I like the you know, various cultural concepts, I, I really like the science right. stuff of this. Um, can we revisit the, the idea of the, the poles shifting? Um, and the um, electric, electromagnetic field. The magnetic field shifting? Yeah, that happens uh, every uh, 100,000 years roughly, and it's been a lot much longer than that since the last one. Um, no one has a really good ex explanation for it. When my students pin me down, what I say, well, it could be that that solid ball in the center just it's in liquid, it just decides to flip. Who knows? Uh, magnetic field doesn't have to be aligned with the rotational field. We know several planets where it's not. Uh, Uranus and Neptune don't have their line properly, what we call properly. And so, um, really, but nothing apparently has ever happened when it flipped to any in the paleontological record. Um, and, and that's the, the flipping of the magnetic pole. Is the magnetic pole. Now, you mentioned something that's because of the moon. That's what we're talking about. For the, oh, okay. We have the rotational pole. Why it goes far. Okay. Then we have the magnetic field. And that's not actually fixed on the Earth. The it can flip. So north cannot become south. North cannot become south in direction but in magnetic poles oh, sure. okay that's where that's one of the things i was confused about yeah and that, that is very red. confusing now these and now you're saying that because of the moon part partly that could not be a possibility because of the moon right. as acting as sort of like a, a balancing how about at some point as the moon continues to move farther and farther away right. from earth what Angular momentum don't conserve. As the moon moves away, we slow down. So okay. angular momentum still conserved. It's the outrigger principle. Well, you know, the outrigger principle keeps you stable. And uh, then the outrigger on the canoes for the Polynesians 
keeps the canoe nice and stable. It's only one of them. Doesn't need to. Uh, and it, it's that sort of thing that just holds it in place. Uh, the math actually isn't really hard. It's algebra. So it'd be easy to show if you wanted it mathematically. You could just uh, look it up. You just conserve angular momentum in a rotating system. Don't need calculus. Okay, there are no more questions. Then um, I'll stop the recording. And again, there will be a loud booming noise announcing okay. that the recording has been stopped. And well, thanks, Dr. Gershon, for coming out and talking about the end of day. And thank you for coming. Okay. Pardon? Uh, actually, that, that's, a, that's a good idea. It's a good idea always. You never sell. Never sell when it's low.